Hi, I'm Jazzy from Atomic Dust, and today I'm going to be talking about brand love, what it is, why it matters, and how to achieve it. The word love in brand love really isn't that much of an exaggeration. As marketing becomes more real-time and more personalized and more ever-present, the relationships that we build with brands really start to mirror our own personal relationships. And a lot of times we end up wanting to advocate for brands, protect them, and see them succeed, much like we would with our friends. So the difference between brand love and brand loyalty is that brand loyalty can exist without brand love. So if you've been working with the same company for 15 years, for example, you might stick with them even if you aren't that passionate about them, even if you don't love them. But brand loyalty is stronger when it's built on that foundation of brand love because it's built on emotion and not logic. Brand love matters because it's a barrier to competition. So if your customers love your brand, it's harder for competitors to come in and undercut it with price cuts or shiny new features or promises. Their connection to your brand is built on something more than bullet points. It's about that, that emotional connection. So at every touch point, they're really celebrating and validating the most deeply held aspirations and identities of their audience, whether that's on the web or on packaging, on customer service calls, anywhere. That vision for what the world could look like is ever present. So let's take an example, a classic example of a lovable brand, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is built on this whole idea of happiness, that it's achievable and it's accessible in the most simple way, just by buying a soda. This is something that we all want to believe about ourselves and the world, and Coca-Cola really reinforces this belief and this vision in everything they do and say. The idea of happiness might seem frivolous on the surface, but really it taps into something we all want, and it taps into our, our vision for a more perfect world. And that's why people love Coca-Cola. It's not about the taste of the soda, um, although it's good. It's more about that, that vision that they have for where the world could go. So this is true for B2B brands as well. Your buyer's professional aspirations are built on their personal aspirations. So when you're selling to them, think about what do they want from the world? What do they want the world to look like? And see how what you offer, your product or your service, fulfills that vision. So there are five questions that you should ask yourself, your colleagues, your employees, and your customers as you work to build a more lovable brand. In what ways, big or small, does my brand contribute to a world that's better? Whether it's healthier, more convenient, easier to live in, more beautiful, how does your brand help to bring that vision to life? Does my brand's vision for a better world align with the vision of my employees and my customers? Is my brand's vision consistent or does it change too frequently, say every year, every quarter, based on competitor activities or other external influences? What does our brand provide to customers and employees beyond a product or a service? And is what we provide in line with our vision? Is my brand worthy of my employees and my customers' trust? Why or why not? So when you're coming up with goals for your marketing plan, think beyond sales and awareness. Think about brand love. It really does matter. It really is the best foundation for loyalty. And it does lead to sales. It could be the key to everything that you're really looking for in your marketing plan.